An emotional day for families in Parkland, Florida, as the three-story high school building where 17 people were shot and killed is being demolished more than six years after that massacre. The Finstoff building served as a constant reminder of that terrifying Valentine's Day in 2018. And now administrators nationwide are trying to use advances in architecture to avoid another incident like Parkland and like so many others over the past few decades. Correspondent Elizabeth Pran is live, Elizabeth, with more on what schools can do in the design stage to try to keep students safe. Yeah. Hey, Nicole, it's summertime, right? So this is an opportunity for change. It's hard to believe that it's been six years six, since Parkland, that 1200 uh, building has been left untouched for the past six years for evidentiary reasons. Um, it was largely left with everything inside over court proceedings. Uh, but it is getting torn down. It's not going to be an implosion. It's going to be piece by piece. It will take several weeks over the summer. But what we're seeing is schools across the country either changing or updating their practice and their procedures on how students prepare for mass shootings, potential mass shootings, and also how they enter and exit a building, how the schools are laid out, how they're designed. So it's not necessarily just metal detectors anymore. Architects are taking it one step further. They're thinking one step further. How do you create a welcome environment? How do you prevent the feeling of isolation, but also keep potential shooters out? And in the worst case scenario, Nicole, keep first responders, um, you know, let them to get into the building if needed, Nicole. Right. So, so Elizabeth, what kinds of changes are we seeing? Yeah, that's a really good question because some schools are making very subtle changes. And then you see Parkland, obviously, in this scenario, taking down an entire building. So architects point to perimeter fencing. That's an easy fix. Limited entry points. So making sure that everything is locked during the day and that there are buzzers at the doors that people can enter during school hours. Students can uh, wear clear backpacks. Some schools require that. Other students on their own uh, volition are purchasing bulletproof backpacks or even inserts that can go inside your backpack that creates a bulletproof backpack. White boards instead of blackboards which we know have been used for years and years, not when you and I were kids, but now, and they're dual purpose. Some of them can turn into safe rooms. And then we're seeing classrooms with safe rooms inside. We spoke with school safety consultant, Kenneth Trump, and he tells us that physical features of schools are just as important as making sure that students and staff understand them. You can need to combine some basic fundamental physical security measures, limited access, secured vestibules, visitor management, adult supervision of children in common areas, while still having the first and best line of defense being a well-trained, highly alert staff and student body. You know, every school is so different, right, Nicole? There's not necessarily federal set guidelines. It's not unified. If you look at SEPTED, which is Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, it's a nonprofit that's working with schools across the country. Now, on the other hand, it's important to point out that there are critics, Nicole, who say we shouldn't be having this conversation. We should be talking about, about federal gun laws so we don't have to be securing schools. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.